Hoorah! Hello, I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm trying out a new technique, I guess you could call it, when it comes to making art. And it's digital traditional art, or as I'm going to be referring to it in this video, social media art. But basically, this style of art is when you create a picture for posting, meaning a picture you would intend to post online, that looks like a traditional piece of art, or at least it has the surroundings in the photo, such as the paper and the desk and maybe a couple of tools thrown in there, but the artwork itself is colored and or rendered digitally. I'm not very good at explaining it exactly, but if you're an artist and you're on Instagram, then you've probably encountered this technique before. And it's really especially Instagram. I've seen a lot of artists do this on uh, that platform, but I've also seen it on places like DeviantArt as well. And it's something that really, really intrigues me because I feel like it's almost an entirely new form of art that only exists because of social media. I have no idea how it exactly started, of course, but my guess is it was the result of a gradual collective creativity of artists when it came to showcasing their art online. You draw a drawing on paper, then you decide you want to show it off to the world, so you take a picture to upload it online. Then you realize your lighting sucks, so you adjust the lighting and contrast a bit, add some filters to make it look nice, and then bam, you're ready for Instagram. And that is usually how far you would go when it comes to showcasing your traditional art, because all you're trying to do is properly showcase something that you've created as accurately as you can to people who aren't in person. Then people started getting a little more creative, being all like, well hey, if I gotta take a photo anyway, may as well make the photo a work of art as well. So it's kind of like art within art. The main point of the photo is to showcase your drawing, but you also took the photo at an interesting angle. Maybe put some random objects around the paper that match with what's going on in the drawing. So in the end, you get a photo that not only shows off your drawing, but is in itself a very nice artistic photo. Then there's digital art. Since there's no photo taking required to show your digital art online, usually you just draw the thing and then bam, upload it. But then what if you combined all these things together to create one image to upload on social media? Perhaps you enjoy sketching traditionally more, so you do that, and then after you take your photo, you go over your sketch and color it digitally, which is exactly what I'm doing in this video. And the result is, well, social media art. And let me explain exactly what I mean by social media art and why I'm calling it that. The reason is because the end result is a piece of art, which that is exactly what it is, because traditional drawing, digital drawing, photography, and photo manipulation are all forms of art. But it's created solely to be posted online, or at least fully appreciated in that way. Of course, as the artist, you create it for yourself because you enjoy creating art, but the end result, that end piece of art, can only be appreciated as an inanimate, standalone digital image. And you may be like, well, what about digital art? Well, while it's true that a lot of the time digital art is only ever viewed as a standalone digital image, you can print it out and bam, you have a physical thing that can now be viewed on a wall or anywhere. And even if it never makes it as a printed thing, even in the realm of digital media, digital art can be used as advertising, it can be in video games, or even just used as a desktop or phone background. But when it comes to social media art, who would want a print of a photo of someone's desk that has a sketchbook that has a drawing on it? You also can't use it as a photo for things like games because, again, it's a photo of a piece of paper. And unlike traditional art, you don't even have a physical original drawing because the traditional part of the drawing is incomplete. Of course though, sometimes people do things like draw the line work traditionally and then scan it in and finish the drawing digitally, such as the case with many comics or manga pages. But I wouldn't consider that the same thing, because the end result is still a digital drawing and can be used for all the same things a purely digital piece could. But the whole point of this digital traditional social media art is that it looks cool as it is, really cool. 
There's a picture of a piece of paper with this digital-esque, but not quite, drawing on it. Especially when it's done really well, which I wouldn't say I did in this video. My end result ended up looking sort of like I just pasted a purely digital drawing on top of a picture of a blank sketchbook. But I have seen some artists that are able to blend the digital aspect with the traditional aspect super well that it can boggle your eyes a bit as you wonder what's real and what's digitally painted. This drawing was really an experiment for me, sort of a way for me to open my mind to really understand why people do this. Because to be totally honest, I didn't get this for the longest time. Whenever I saw people making these social media drawings, I was always like, why would you do that? I viewed it as something that you spend a lot of time and effort on and was ultimately, in my head, not real art. There was this thinking in the back of my mind that it was in a way cheating or lying, like you were trying to tell the world that the drawing you're showing them is traditional when in reality it was heavily or mostly done digitally. But the thing is, most of the time artists are very open about their process and they openly say that this is what they do. But even when they don't, artists shouldn't be forced to explain every aspect of how they got to the end result of their art in order for it to be validated. Art is art, as long as you like it, and even if you don't, it's still art, and there shouldn't be any requirement for the artist to openly explain all the techniques they use just so people will not accuse them of being not real artists. As long as, of course, they're not purposefully lying or stealing or trying to mislead people. Which, I mean, I'll admit, I've seen people legit just take a 100% digital drawing that was questionably drawn by them, possibly just taken off of the internet somewhere, and then slapping it on top of a picture of a sketchbook and try to pull it off like they drew it traditionally. But when it comes to just being an honest, art-making artist who's just trying to express themselves as best as they can using whatever mediums they can, whatever you create should be considered real art. And this thinking led me to think about how, for a long time, digital art was considered not real art. And even to this day, there are still plenty of people who believe it's not, even though digital art is 100% as real as any other art. So when I thought of it like that, I figured maybe I was just being a little closed-minded about this whole social media art thing, which led me to this drawing and ultimately this video. And from doing this, I realized just how much work really does go into making a picture like this. First, you have to sketch, which we all know the work that goes into that. Then you have to take a photo, but not just any photo. It has to be a good photo. It has to be aesthetically pleasing, as though you are going to be posting it. Which, if you post your art on social media, you know the struggles that can cause. <laughs> And then finally, you have to paint over a photo digitally, which is a very different experience to drawing a purely digital piece of artwork. I actually had to spend quite a bit of time figuring out how to put my colors under the sketch lines while still on top of the white paper. And in the end, just like with any art, I found that there were things I really could improve on with practice. As I mentioned, my piece looks a lot more like a digital drawing that was pasted on a picture of a sketchbook, so there could be some improvement there when it comes to making my digital rendering look a little less artificial. Also, let's be honest, the photo itself really could have been a little bit more aesthetic. I mean, all I have there going is my dirty grey kneaded eraser. <laughs> the end result didn't feel any less difficult than if I was doing a purely traditional piece or a purely digital piece, and it took me the same amount of time. But the end result is different, and unique, and looks really cool to be honest. It's not traditional art or digital art, it's social media art. And the fact that there are people in this world who make a living doing nothing but posting pictures to social media just shows that social media has become a very integrated and real aspect of our culture. And just like in the past, with every era comes new art and new ways of creating it. And I think that whether we actively realize it or not, we are currently building what future generations will look back on as a period in history that had its own unique flavor of art. Social media art. Or whatever them future hipsters will end up calling it down the line. After all, at the end of the day, true art is creativity, it's innovation, it's expression. And if you're really good, it's all three put together. 
But really, this whole video was really just a result of me staying up late and getting overly philosophical, so I could have no idea what I'm talking about. But at least, I've learned a new way of making art that I think is really cool. Even if I were to remove the whole picture of my sketchbook thing and just looked at the drawing, I don't think that personally I could achieve that style if I didn't do it this way. The way I sketch and color traditionally and the way I sketch and color digitally look very different. So by combining half and half, I was able to get this really cool concept arty style that I really like and to combine two of my favorite things, traditional sketching and digital coloring. And if I were to do this in a way where I simply crop the photo so it doesn't look like a picture of my sketchbook, I could make some really cool looking drawings that could be used for other purposes other than just looking lit on Instagram. And at the end of it, you really get two drawings, the original sketch in my sketchbook and the digitally colored version. So all in all, I'm really glad I gave this a shot because I learned a lot and I got a bunch of inspiration. I would not be too surprised if you see me posting more art like this in the future because it was really fun. I would totally recommend trying this out sometime if you're both a traditional and digital artist like I am. It's really cool to be able to bridge that gap. Now that I kinda sorta know how to do this whole thing, if you guys would like a tutorial on how to draw on top of your traditional art photos digitally, let me know, cause I'd be glad to show you guys some tricks and stuff that I use to do that. But for now, that'll bring us to the end of this week's video. I know this video was a lot more topic, philosophical, chatty than usual, but I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this type of art. And now I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think of, as I called it, social media art? Do you feel like it's cheating? Is it something that you already do? If not, is it something that you'd try out? I'm really curious to hear people's views on this, so do leave a comment down below if you have a moment. If you enjoyed this video in any way, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell to stay notified so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. I post new videos every week, usually uploading on Sundays. If you'd like to follow me on social media, all the links to that are down in the description box where you can follow me for daily updates. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!